What's going on, Jeff fans? ESPN's Matt Miller released a seven-round mock draft for the New York Jets. Let's get into it and let's see what we think. So, number one, pick number 10 to start it off with a fiery debate because uh, only two sides to this coin, typically. Brock Bowers, tight end, Georgia. Now, I think ideally for pick number one, I think my ideal scenario in the first round would be to be able to trade back and still get an offensive tackle. Now, that's easier said than done. You know, trade back and get a second would be difficult. Maybe if you trade or even sliding back a little bit and getting a third. Um, and, or maybe you package up your fourth round pick and then you exchange it for, you know, a second round pick, something like that. But I think trading down still somewhere into the teens maybe and getting one of those top five tackles not named Joe Alt would be the ideal scenario for round one. But Brock Bowers is fun, man. You put him with Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams on the outside, Tyler Conklin as your tight end, and he would pri primarily play your slot, uh, basically be your slot player. So it would be, you know, technically 12 personnel masquerading as 11 personnel. He'd be a starter. Uh, amazing yak ability, great playmaker. He's going to come in and make an impact on the team right away and, and, and be super fun. You know, not my number one preferred choice, but Brock Bowers, I mean, I'd be excited if they took him, you know. Now, ne the next pick. We don't have a second round pick, so this is pick 72 in the third round. Cam Kitchen, safety Miami. I love this pick. I don't know if he's there at 72, but I, I love this selection. He is a center fielding ball hawk playmaker with just a knack for making big plays. Now, he doesn't, he didn't test as athletically as he plays, you know, the RAS score is very low, um, you know, f four, six, five, forty. But safety is one of the positions where athletic testing has a, a lower correlation to professional success uh, compared to other positions, or like offensive line. There's a there's a high correlation, edge high correlation. Um, but he's one of the few positions where you could take a pick seventy two, and I'm thinking, you know what, probably a a day one starter or at the very least competing to be a day one starter with Tony Adams or Chuck Clark and then beyond that the Jets don't have uh, it's just JBC on the roster Ash and Davis still yet to be re-signed so safety is definitely a need and Cam Kitchens comes in and he gives you that ability when the Jets go cover one you, you really trust him as a center fielder now when teams you know split him out wide and he has to go over and play man coverage where Tony Adams is pretty good uh, so he kind of his, his and Tony Adams' strengths and weaknesses are a little bit opposite of each other. But obviously, he's a better prospect than Tony Adams was coming out. And, and I like Cam Kitchens a lot. I think he'd probably start. Uh, now, he did play most of his reps were deep safety, a lot of them in the slot. That's just how college football is played. You know, there's not a ton of box safety being played in college. So safety is definitely often a projection at the next level because a lot of these guys moonlight as slot corners. But he played traditional free safety most of his reps and I think he could come in there and do that right away so I like the pick it's just a really good player at a position of need pick 72 Cam Kitchens love it next going to the fourth round the first fourth round pick pick 4a Jamari Thrash wide receiver Louisville right 6'1 190 pounder uh, can probably play all three positions to some extent mainly an X in college you know 2,000 yards and 13 touchdowns combined over the last two seasons Again, with these two picks, 72, uh, the third rounder and then Thrash, not necessarily the, the RAS. Joe Douglas is a RAS score <laughs> obsessor. And Thrash, very low. Uh, very low in the athletic testing. Now, he the strengths, he was top 30 in the nation in both yak per catch and missed tackle force rate. So, there you go. You got hit, Brock Bowers, yak machine, Thrash, Yak dude. Now, his contested catch rate was 16%. That is abysmal. That's like in the in the first percentile of qualifying wide receivers. So he didn't have a ton of contested catch opportunities, but that's pretty tough. And then the drop rate is 11%. And that's like twice what you, you ideally would like. So not very good hands. Now, I think in terms of what the Jets do offensively, yeah, I think he could, being a shallow crosser, on those mesh concepts and and some yak ability there sure probably could come in and be what your number four receiver right away competing with you know brownlee or whatever the case may be so it's a relative position of need it gives you some depth of wide receiver it is the fourth round uh i say okay i'm fine with that that selection there 
Now, uh, the rest of this draft, there's only one of the dudes, the quarterback he has taken. Did I really, did I, did I know just from being a fan of college football? So the rest of these guys, I had to like look up and see who the heck are they. Um, so 135, this is the pick we got from Baltimore. Garrett Greenfield, offensive tackle, South Dakota State. So man, now if he didn't, if he didn't at least get an offensive tackle with one of these fourth round picks, I might have had to ripped up this draft because that. But the problem is, okay, I'm looking at his scouting reports, and I looked at like three of them, and the first thing that comes up in all three of them is how good of a dude he is and how good of a leader he is, which is great. That's awesome. But man, I need some traits. I need to know: are you, are you going to be a good dude, Aaron Rodgers, by keeping him alive if you have to play? Because as of right now, the backup tackles he'd be competing with Carter Warren, Max Mitchell to be the primary backup tackle as a fourth round pick, right? Same draft pedigree as those two guys. Now, obviously, if you play in a smaller school, you got to dominate. He was an All American eventually. Athleticism set the record for the vertical jump for an offensive tackle. A little lighter than you'd like, six six and a half, only three hundred and seven pounds. So there's play strength concerns there. And then the projections I saw for him, I saw the highest I saw was a fifth round projection all the way to UDFA. So man, we're not getting the first, the first tackle you take is a guy who's like a fifth round to UDFA level prospect. Ooh, that's leaving a sour taste in my mouth. I mean, maybe this guy's great. I don't know. I'm just going off the information I, I, I saw, but even some guys that could be there in the fourth round that, that I do know of like Christian Jones from Texas or, um, you know, the kid from Utah, Isaiah Adams, Illinois. I just think there could probably be a better option if you're going to wait until tackle for pick 135. And then we go to the sixth round pick, 185, Tanner McLaughlin, tight end Arizona. You know, 1,000 yards combined and six touchdowns over the last two years, 6'5", 240 pounds, zero drops in his career. Uh, good athlete. This is good, good RAS score testing. Allegedly ran a limited route tree. Similar to Tyler Conklin's profile coming out, honestly, who went in the fifth round. Um, now, if you're drafting Bowers and McLaughlin, and then you have Yaboa and Koontz, I'm not sure. I guess maybe you keep four tight ends, and then Nick Bowden's the odd man out. So maybe McLaughlin and Koontz are competing, and the loser goes to the practice squad. I mean, at this point, if he does become Tyler Conklin, great. So, um, I think maybe like run, running back two in this spot. Uh, maybe you could have gone into your offensive line here instead of waiting because he does that at the end. But um, I don't think it's a crazy pick to take him in, in the sixth round. At this point, if you're getting a player who can play, you know, this is sixth, seventh round onto UDFA. It's like if they can contribute at all, it's a win. Seventh round, first, seventh round pick, Joe Milton, quarterback, Tennessee. Fine. You know, Joe Milton in the fourth round, absolutely not. Joe Milton, if we trade it and end up with a fifth round pick, absolutely not. Sixth to seventh round, fine. Obviously, he has a freaking cannon. He's huge. He's athletic, but he was terrible <laughs> at Tennessee. Saw the drop off between how Hendon Hooker ran that offense and how he did. But if you want to take it, if you want to do that, it, it's just, we're talking the 250s here. These are comp picks. This is like basically UDFA territory. Totally fine if you want to do that. And then he rounds it off with guard um, Brady Latham, uh, Arkansas. So. A, potentially a pipeline guard there who would probably start on the practice squad. Now, what I like about this draft is the first two picks are getting starters. You're getting day one starters, I think most likely. Obviously, Bowers is a starter, and I think the, I think Cam, Cam would start at safety. And then with your next two picks, you're getting guys who would probably play a significant role as a depth player immediately with Thrash, the wide receiver, coming in, probably being wide receiver four. Maybe even, maybe, hey, if Mike Williams can't start the first two games, like is Thrash better than Lazard, Brownlee, and Gibson right away? It's a possibility. He, he could, you know, he could be one of your top three receivers uh, with Mike Williams' health not a guarantee that he's going to be available week one. Um, and then up to the offensive lineman, you hope would be competing to be the swing tackle. So you are getting immediate impact. Um, but my problem is the first offensive lineman you get is a guy that most people see as like an average of a six round player. The first offensive tackle. That's tough, man. That's a tough pill to swallow with this, with this mock here. And then you don't go running back two. You don't go edge at all, which I think are are significant needs. But um, eh, I don't know. Let me know what grade you would give this mock draft. It was an interesting one. I hadn't seen you know Bowers and then the safety there. So not just the normal chalk stuff we've been talking about. So I thought it was interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We'll talk all soon.